So the first step would be to start the terminal. So if you're on Windows, go ahead and open Anaconda prompt. If you're on Mac or Linux, you can open a new terminal. So once you open a new terminal window, this will look like this. Once you've installed Anaconda, you will see this main in your terminal. This says this is in your base environment. So when you start a new terminal, you'll be in the default Anaconda environment. This comes with some packages that are built in, but not the stuff that we've installed. All of you, we had asked you to create a new environment and install some required packages. And we have installed this in the Python foundation environment. If your data is in a different drive, so you download the zip file and put it in a different drive, you have to change the drive first. So on Windows, let's say you have a data on B drive, you can do D colon and enter. If you have data on C drive in your downloads or documents or desktop, don't do any of that. You're fine. On Mac or Linux, you are fine as well. Right? So switch the drive letter now. If you have downloaded your data into anything else except the C drive. And the way you switch is type the drive letter followed by colon and press enter. Now we'll have to activate the environment. So these are the steps you will have to do every time you want to work with the Jupyter Lab environment. You have to activate the environment where you have installed all the packages. We'll going to use this command conda space activate space python underscore foundation. This command says that you have go and activate the environment where you have installed all the packages and the name of the environment is Python Foundation. Once you do this, your prompt will change and you'll see that uh, Python Foundation appear on your prompt. This indicates that you are now inside of the Python Foundation environment. You have access to all the packages that have been installed with Python in this particular environment. Once we have this, we need to launch Jupyter Lab. So we'll type Jupyter space lab and press enter. This will open up a new tab in your browser that looks like this. You'll see some text here. Do not worry about it. Do not close this window. This window has to be running as long as you are using the Jupyter Lab environment. So don't do anything with this. Keep it running and you will see a new tab open in your browser and you will see something that looks like this. Once the Jupyter Lab starts, you will see uh, your file structure on the left. Go and find the place where we have downloaded the Python Foundation folder. So I have this folder in my downloads. I'm going to go to downloads, find the Python Foundation directory, and you'll see all the files that we have for the course here. Once you find your files, you can double click this first notebook, 00 Hello World, to open it. And once your screen looks like this, we are ready to start the course. So let's understand what is this Jupyter Lab. First, when you're doing Python programming, you need to install Python. There are many, many ways to install Python on a computer. We use Conda to install Python and install all the different packages. That's one of the ways. So we use Conda to install Python. We can use many other ways to install Python. So we have Python installed on our system. Now, to do any programming and run a program, you need to write your code and run it. How do we do that? Again, there are many, many different ways of doing this. One of the ways to do this is using JupyterLab. JupyterLab is an integrated development environment or an IDE. An IDE allows you to write code, run it using Python, and see the output. And you can do all of that in one place. JupyterLab is a very popular IDE that is used a lot by data scientists for data analysis. I also love this environment. Whenever I'm working on a data analysis geospatial project, I prefer using uh, JupyterLab for doing my uh, programming. This is also a very friendly environment, so it's suitable for beginners, and you, you can kind of debug your code very easily, and you can kind of do it in a much more approachable way. So we're going to use JupyterLab as an IDE. During the last session, I'll show you what other IDEs and other environments you can use for your Python programming. The JupyterLab environment uses something called notebooks as files to store your code. So here we are in a notebook. A notebook is a kind of file format that can store some text. So you can see here is some text and you have some code. So the JupyterLab, you can read a notebook. A notebook can consist of some text and some code. The code 
is in this place called a cell. So each thing is known as a cell here. And whenever you encounter a code uh, in a cell, you can run that. So the each notebook consists of multiple lines of code that you can run. And once you save it, it'll be in this format called IPYNB. IPYNB stands for Interactive Python Notebooks. That was the name of the earlier project where people figured out that you can also run Python in this interactive way. It was really useful for data science and it, they started becoming more popular. So that's why the file format is still IPYNB. The project was earlier IPython, which is now Jupyter. It evolved to support more languages and more environments. So now Jupyter stands for Julia, Python, and R. That are the main three languages that the project supports, not just Python. So, so we have this file open. We have one code cell, which we can run. So you can come to the cell, highlight that, and click this button. There's a play button here, and it says run this cell. So click to run the cell. Once you run this, this code will be sent to the Python that is installed on your computer and say, run this cell and show me the output. Try this out. Every time you learn a new programming language, one of the first things you do is try to print hello world. It's a simple thing, but this tells you how to give input to your program, where does the program give you output. So when we run this, you can see in Python, it's very simple. You write some code, goes to the Python interpreter, it says, the user wants me to print this text and it just prints it right there. The notebook runs the code cell by cell. This is also very helpful because when you're doing some data science, you do one step, check your output, do the next step, do some analysis, see if it works. So it can allow us to go to step by steps, mimic the kind of data science process. You can also change the code here. So I can just come and say, hello class. Once I change the code, I can click Play again and it runs that cell. So it's just text which I'm changing and it interprets this and prints the output. If I want to write some more code, I can add new cells to it. So you can see there's a plus button here. It says insert a cell below. If I click plus, it opens up a new cell and I can type some code. And I can type welcome, right? and I can run this. When you are typing a lot of code, every time you write a line of code, you want to run it, you want to reach out with your mouse to this play button. Instead, you can learn this shortcut called shift plus enter. So try this out, go to any cell and type shift enter, which will run. This is the way to run your cell without reaching out for the mouse button. So if you see any cell, and you want to run it, so I will change it back to hello world, shift, enter, run it, and you can run the cell. Okay, this makes it much easier to go through notebooks very fast and execute the cells. You can delete the code just the way you delete uh, a cell and the code will be gone. Sometimes when you run this and you have some output cluttering your notebook, you can right click and say clear cell output. We'll just keep remove the output. Okay, so the output will be gone. So this is the basic introduction to the JupyterLab environment. The key things to remember is it's an IDE, allows you to write, run, and view the output of your program. It runs cell by cell. The uh, cells are containing code, which you can run one by one and see the output. And once you're done, you can save this and your files is saved. So it is saved and you can share this file with others. They'll see the same thing. 